when we go to a friend who's very spiritual, you know, very spiritual, very enlightened, and you, we tell them that, and the, and the the our friend could tell us something like, "Well, that's that's the will of God," or "Well, that's karma," which, yeah, ultimately it could be the will of God, it could be karma. However, when we do that without processing first what's going on, the feeling, the sensations, the thoughts, then it could lead to repression, and that repression can come up later in a much more destructive type of way. Hi, so today I felt inspired to make a little video. Um, and the thing that kept coming on what the video should be about, it kept coming this idea of the importance of engaging in both spiritual practice and psychological practice in order for both of them to... Because I've seen that when they're together, they work better. Spiritual practice itself can be very beneficial for our psyche and for our own development and spiritual development. And psychological work can also be very beneficial on its own. However, when they work together, they, they tend to potentialize each other and see being able to allow, allow ourselves to see the gaps that we would not be able to do so if we only do spiritual work or psychological work. And we could engage in, if we do, for instance, a lot of spiritual practice um, or religious practice, we could, or even self-development practice, can give us a sense of spiritual bypassing. And what's spiritual bypassing? Well, spiritual bypassing is pretty much um, using any sort of spirituality, either self-development, more mystic spirituality or religion to mask some of our self psychological wounds. So it's using spirituality in a way that it doesn't serve us um, in the best possible way. So for instance, one way we can do spiritual bypassing is with spiritual sympathy with ourselves or with another person. Let's say that we have a, we have a crisis, we have something that is really, really hard for us and um, let's say we have a kid and the kid dies. So someone, and we go to a friend who's very spiritual, you know, very spiritual, very enlightened, and you, we tell them that, and, the, and the, the, our friend could tell us something like, well, that's, that's the will of God, or well, that's karma, which, yeah, ultimately, it could be the will of God, it could be karma, however, when we do that, without processing first what's going on, the feeling, the sensations, the thoughts, then it could lead to repression, and that repression can come up later in a much more destructive type of way. So that would be spiritual sympathy. And we could also do that with ourselves. Again, we have a kid and the kid dies, and then we don't, not, we don't even allow ourselves to feel that. We don't know, allow ourselves to, to really make sense of what happened because we're too spiritual and it, it must be the will of God, it must be karma. And again, and even, even if that's true, it's beneficial to be able to, to explore that, to follow that, the thought, to follow the emotions so it doesn't, rep it doesn't um, turn into something repressed that just comes out later in a, in a worse way, in, a, in an addiction, in an obsession, in a, um, in a bad mood, in we're not able to sleep well, many different ways, right? Many different ways it can come up if we don't deal with it properly. So once again, the importance of using, combining both spirituality with psychological tools, psychological processes, is that we're able to see those gaps and process them as opposed to using repression or suppression for it. And one of the, because a lot of spiritual paths, they put a lot of emphasis into realizing ourselves, realizing God, and just the, the end goal of, of self-realization and waking up, but not enough into, psych, into the psychological part. One of the um, paths that I've seen that it, they do do that, and they've done that since the beginning, it's uh, Buddhism. So one of the things that I really like about Buddhism, that they honor the mind, they honor the, um, the emotions, and they, rip, they, like, they're very aware of where we are as humans. Like, we're here, we cannot pretend to be, be much more higher, um, and it will just make a disservice to us pretending that we're much better than we are. 
So in Buddhism, they've always explored the mind really well, the mind, the emotions, uh, you know, the difference between pain and suffering. And I see it in as a very beneficial way to bring back, to close those gaps that could be encountered with, with, um, with just using psychology or just using spirituality. And actually, well, Buddhism, as we know, is one of the main inspirations for the mindfulness movement because they've already, they were already so, um, so precise in their descriptions. And maybe as I'm talking about this, you could remember times, maybe not with you, but maybe also with others, because sometimes it's easier to see uh, flaws and defects in others, where um, we see this spiritual or religious leader who we would think they're so wise and saintly, and then they engage into these horrible behaviors with their students or with other parts of this of society, this sexual type of deviancy. And we could think maybe one of the first times we encounter this, like, what is this? Aren't these people so spiritual and so saintly? How come they engage in those behaviors? Or maybe we go the other way, saying like, if these people are, if these people are behaving in such a, such a heinous type of way, then all spirituality should, it's BS. All religion is BS. When I think the reality is more nuanced than that, right? Because um, we could be, we could grow in different, we could have, I mean, there's different lines of development, right? There's a physical line of development, there's the emotional line, the psychological line that encompasses, encompasses the emotional line as well. So for instance, we could grow a lot into the emotional part, the emotional line, but not so much on the spiritual line or vice versa. So like for instance, Ken Wilber, the one of the ways he explains this is a teacher who engages in criminal activity and just makes these horrible things, then their spiritual line could be very much developed, but their emotional and psychological line could be really lacking behind. And we say, wait, how come? Well, because ideally or stereotypically, then someone who's spiritual, all of those lines that are important of maturity will grow together. But in reality, there's quite a there's quite many exceptions, which I'm sure you've heard in spiritual circles and religious circles where they don't grow together. So ideally it does. In other words, that's where gradual paths are there for, to gradually helping us mature all the way up um, instead of just sudden paths that can create this type of crazy wisdom where the person has access to non-dual experiences and very deep profound exp um, spiritual experiences but they have not worked through their shadow. Um, so that's one of the reasons we explain that, the difference, the, um, that phenomena of spiritual gurus or spiritual teachers, religious leaders who engage in horrible acts, but they don't, um, and we would expect them to be better because their spiritual line may be very developed, but their emotional line is not. So again, the importance of psychotherapy the importance of mental health therapy, any type of psychological resources to help us um, move both of them together. And even if we're beginning, we're in the middle, we're more advanced in our spiritual practice, or it's, it's beneficial, especially, I mean, I guess if, we're, if we seem, if we feel we're very developed in our spiritual part, um, it's good to remember that that part is to remember to do psychological work to prevent that type of um, Ken Wilber also I think calls it like the Darth Vader type of syndrome someone who's very high up in the mystical domain but not very much on the other domains so yeah I think this is a call to action to for humility to remember our humility to be more humble and to recognize that even if we have access to maybe these very beautiful expanded states of consciousness, then we could also benefit from, from psychological work. Even if we already have students, even if we, we're running workshops or retreats or we have a center, because that's the people who have more responsibility and they are more at risk of hurting others. Um, one of the things that this reminds me of one, one of, um, one story of Adyashanti, which is this Zen 
teacher in the Bay Area, around San Francisco in California, where when he started to have this more deep states of consciousness and he was ready to start teaching, he sat with his uh, mother, with his mother and a couple of his best friends, if I remember correctly, and he told them, was like, listen, I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to start to get all, maybe I may start to get all this attention from people. Please keep me in check. Please keep me in check, especially with sex, fame and money, which is when many, where many spiritual religious leaders struggle with. So if you see myself being, like embracing too much of many of these uh, scenes, let's say, instead of embracing virtue, I want you to like sit me down and help me through, which I think it's very wise from him um, because he's seen other people fall and he didn't want to fall himself for his own sake and, you know, for, for his students as well. So I think that's one of the ways to to keep ourselves in check if it's not just through therapy, but also with with people we consider that can tap into wisdom and allow them to be humble with them and, and express our our needs and express our the things that we may be struggling or if we're not struggling to um, maybe they can see that we are spiritually bypassing. So that's one of the ways. So again, we like to work on both so we are able to see those gaps and be able to overcome them as opposed to be blinded by them. So that's how we can deal with spiritual bypassing. I'm going to also leave some links on the description um, that you can take a look at. There is this guy who coined the term spiritual bypassing. He himself, it seems, allegedly, that he was the leader of a cult and he continues to have um, those type of behaviors, um, again, allegedly, but what the book says, it's pretty, it's pretty spot on. Um, and I think it can, ver can be very beneficial for us to realize when we're doing that, when we're engaging in spiritual way passing. And it's also, it could be funny and insightful when we've done it and how we other people have done it. And it's normal. It's normal we're gonna engage in it. It's just to bring more awareness to it, to bring more light can really help us through that. Um, so yeah, I hope you, you enjoyed this video. Um, if you think someone can benefit from it, please share it. And then also, if you have any questions, personal questions, or if you would like to work personally with me to deal with the spiritual, um, maybe with spiritual bypassing, mental health type of therapy, don't hesitate to contact me. My links will also be in the description. And um, thanks a lot. I hope I can do more of these videos um, more spontaneously. And uh, you can let me know if you, what topics do you want? And um, yeah, any questions, comments, you can follow me here on YouTube and on my other channels and on my website here. Okay, well, enough with the rambling. Thanks a lot and I hope you're having a great week. Bye-bye.